Kids Matter Teachers Care, Taking a Stand. October 2005 saw teachers in this province taking on the state. You may be wondering, what was it that drove the teachers of this province to take on the state? Teachers on the whole are a very conservative group and we're law-abiding people. Well, we have to look at our history. In 2002, this government drove a truck through our collective agreement. That legislation means larger class sizes. It means less specialist teacher support. It means less support for the students with special needs in this province. Mr. Campbell, you lied. Teachers walked the picket lines for limits on class size. In 2002, our collective agreements were stripped. Bill 28 wiped out provisions in the teacher's contract that guaranteed class size limits, support for special needs kids, librarians, counselors, ESL programs and others. We took this to the courts. We took that to the courts in BC and we took it to the international courts. And you know something? Every time we won, this government just passed new laws. One, two, three, four. We took part in a one day protest. There were many who have said since then, we should have stayed out longer. I agree. But do you know something? We were not ready. And after our day of protest, we got to work. We're teachers, so we developed a four-year lesson plan, our public education advocacy plan. And the focus of that plan was to coordinate all our work so that what was happening in our classrooms was being shared in our communities, with parents. Our teachers were a little bit reluctant to speak. After our teachers got talking, they couldn't stop. And they told the stories of what was happening in classrooms around this province. And people listened. And teachers, as they talked, were amazed at how much support there was there from the public. And the more we talked, the more worried the government got. They took us to court. They tried to silence our voices. We won. And we continue to tell our stories. The nominees are Gordon Campbell for The Closer. The story of one man who closes 113 schools. Gordon Campbell for Backwards. About a province with 2,500 fewer teachers and larger classes. And Gordon Campbell for A Million Dollars Baby a film about what you'll need to attend a BC university or college. And the most devastating performer is Gordon Campbell. The Losers, BC Kids. We carried on our campaign into the provincial election. We are here to remind people that they need to get out there and vote. And we are here to remind people that they need to be voting for public education and to really think about the various platforms that all parties are presenting. They took away his special needs support. Her library is closed three days a week. His science lab is seriously overcrowded. She can't afford college or university anymore. His class has 35 kids, and they closed her school. 113 schools closed, 2,500 fewer teachers. Gordon Campbell's liberals, broken promises, a disturbing record. A message from concerned BC teachers. And we had to be political in a way that education became a vote-determining issue. Before the election, during the election, and after the election, we were at the bargaining table. And you know, we were not getting anywhere. And government was refusing to meet with us. So we were forced, in September, to take a strike vote. And we took our strike vote. It was 88.5%. And I have to tell you that as we travelled around the province, what we said to teachers was, don't vote for this strike vote if you're interested in a one-day job action. This strike vote has to mean that we're willing to go the way. And after our strike vote, we went on what I call a piddly little job action, where we weren't going to meetings and we were not doing some administrivia. 
we as teachers were still teaching kids, we were still meeting with parents, we were still de delivering a quality education program. But do you know something? This government couldn't handle that. Good evening. One week before BC teachers were set to begin rotating strikes, the BC government is stepping in with legislation. Bill number 12 and titled Teachers Collective Agreement Act. And the province's teachers have only threatened to strike, and yet the BC government isn't taking any chances. It's imposing a contract on them. They have once again used the legislative hammer in a punitive manner. The real issues are over things like class size, over library services, over special education. The teachers believe those are contract issues to be bargained. The government says no way. So if there is any resolution to this issue, it's going to be how both sides handle those issues. Well, the BCTF executive met today behind closed doors to discuss its response to the government's Bill 12, which extends the current collective agreement until next June. Meantime, teachers across BC are being asked to vote on a union action plan. Only teachers could go into meetings around this province, local after local, to take a vote to go into civil disobedience. But you know something? This wasn't new for us. All of us remember our College of Teachers campaign when we refused to pay our fees. And this government threatened to take away our college certificates. But we stood together. And this government had to take a step backwards. In the same way, when we voted the second time, we knew what the legal ramifications were. We knew we were putting our teaching certificates on the line. We knew we were putting our profession on the line. We knew we were putting our union at risk. And we even knew that we were putting ourselves on the line because we could face personal fines as well as prison sentences. And knowing all of that, knowing all of that, teachers in this province were prepared to take a stand against an unjust law. Teachers are law abiding, but teachers also have a sense of justice. And here, they were having the last vestige of their rights being taken away. And teachers in local after local said, no more. They have voted 90.5% to take a stand to protest Bill 12. As a result, teachers will mount picket lines at schools across BC on Friday. They will remain off the job until a resolution has been reached. As BC's 42,000 teachers prepare to walk picket lines tomorrow in a strike the government calls illegal, we have extensive coverage tonight, beginning with results just within the past hour of a global BC News 1130 public opinion poll. The Mustel Group asked a sample of 315 people across BC, based on what you know about the dispute, which side do you tend to support? 52.7% of the respondents say they support the teachers while 26% say they support the Employers Association. 21.3% say they don't know. As you go from school to school, same things come to view. People stretched beyond their means. As the kids crowd into class, worried parents come to ask, will Mr. Campbell ever learn? I sure hope that they all look away. So they well, we're here this morning to support the teachers. Support of teachers. Support for teachers. Support the teachers. Support the teachers. Support the teachers. It's great that people are supporting us. It's it's really nice to see. It makes us feel feel good. When will you ever learn? We were here when you tore that contract up. Um, girls, why are you here today? We support the teachers in their stand for yeah. education. And we thought that it would be helpful if they had nice hot coffee so they wouldn't be standing out in the cold. How do you feel about the people that say, you know, teachers are supposed to be responsible and then they're breaking we, we the would law? Be, we, we, we would be irresponsible. We would be irresponsible not to finally say, we can't, we can't teach like this. I have been a resource teacher trying to support 
these severely learning disabled kids in the system. When I first started teaching at Templeton 10 years ago, my, my caseload averaged about 25 to 30 students a year. Mm -hmm. This year I have 105. There is no way I can support that many students. On average, our salary has gone up 1% a year, while the inflation is going up 2 to 3% in recent years. It's a reality that's now part of BC teachers' lives. Despite university education, they have fallen farther and farther behind other skilled and educated workers. It looks as if BC teachers will not be heading back to their classrooms tomorrow and their strike will go on. That's despite the fact that a judge has declared the teachers in contempt of court, which could result in heavy fines or even the jailing of union leaders. This is a fight for workers' rights in this province, British Columbia. I've not been on strike before. And what's it like? Uh, it's it's frightening, but at the same time, finally, I feel like I'm making myself heard for my students. These teachers say that this has been 10 years in the making, 10 years of frustration with a government who has not uh, once bargained a collective agreement. They know their strike is illegal, so BC teachers are expecting to be taught a lesson in court today. But no one was expecting the surprise that a B.C. Supreme Court judge had in store. This ruling is unprecedented and quite creative. And what it essentially does is take away the BCTF's ability to dole out strike pay. Justice Brenda Brown decided not to fine, but to essentially freeze the union's assets for the next 30 days. Meaning the BCTF's war chest, worth $14 million, will be under lock and key and its members without strike pay. I take my hat off to, uh, to the judge, she's a woman, and she's obviously used a little bit of creativity instead of a, the big hammer. Surprisingly, everyone that's going by, you know, giving us honks and thumbs up, and it actually has been very good response, so it's nice to see. I think people are finally understanding what's going on and seeing the true colours of our government. <laughs> We're here to support teachers. I'm here to support the teachers, but I'm a teamster. Lisa, BCGU, to support the teachers. Our support is just is not just countrywide, it's worldwide. The South African Democratic Teachers, with 220,000 members representing the majority of South African teachers, pledges, pledges solidarity with the teachers of British Columbia in their current dispute. The conditions you describe are reminiscent of those experienced by South African teachers under the apartheid government. <laughs> with the plumbers and pipe fitters and we're in full support of the teachers. The steel workers. I'm here to support teachers. It seems every time the government does more to us, we have more supporters. And that's unheard of. I haven't seen that happen. Public opinion is rising. We support the teachers! 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 President Kenny Sanders is here. Teachers are still out of class, still picketing after being handed a fine for contempt of court of half a million dollars. You don't feel like you've been used by the BCTF? I am the BCTF. I voted that decision. I voted to walk out. No one told me to do this. It was my decision. If I chose not to vote, I wouldn't walk this picket line. It's, I, I, I am the BCTF, along with everybody else that's out here. We as teachers, have not fully realized the power of what we did. 
we took on a state and we came out of it whole with some gains, not a lot, but with some gains, but with public support. And we came out of it together and we came out of it with a vote taken by the members. And that's what makes us so strong. You know, I can go anywhere around this province and people seem to think they know Ginny. And people today 